It's interesting is that some days you're cruising along and you get all the stuff done and then suddenly you go, where did it go? <laughs> One of the humorous things about uh, being in the tech industry is that you can plan for it, you can have backup plans, you can have, oh, I don't know, all kinds of fail-safes and protections, but the reality is, is when you deal with technology, there are times when, no matter what you do, <laughs> you lose something along the way. And in Devotional, we try to be as truthful as possible, so with Tozer, we're doing a redo because I have no idea where it went, but it went, whoo, and it's gone. <laughs> but praise the Lord, sometimes that's God doing it too. So, in a redo, believe it, Christ, the just, died for the unjust. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Romans 3, 26. The present state of the human race before God is probationary. The world is on trial. The voice of God sounds over the earth. Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Choose you this day. The whole question of right and wrong, of moral responsibility, of justice and judgment, and reward and punishment is sharply accented for us by the fact that we are members of a fallen race, occupying a position halfway between heaven and hell. With the knowledge of good and evil inherent within our intricate natures, along with the ability to turn towards the good and an inborn propensity or habit to turn towards evil. The cross of Christ has altered somewhat the position of certain persons before the judgment of God. Toward those who embrace the provisions of mercy that center around the death and resurrection of Jesus, one phase of judgment is no longer operative. Our Lord stated this truth in this way, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. John 5:24. Christ died in the darkness for us men, he made it possible for God to remit the penalty of the broken law and reestablish repentant sinners in his favor exactly as if they had never sinned, and to do the whole thing without relaxing the severity of the law or compromising the high standards of justice. Romans 3:24, 26. The just died for the unjust. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. When we put it into perspective of what Jesus has done, then we have nothing to boast in or to be glad of or to run off and act like, you know, we're somebody special because it's important to know that God loves you, but it's not important to think that you're anything without him because in reality, you're just dust in the wind. You could say you're just a stick waiting to be torched. But when Jesus when we accept the fact that Jesus died for us and we recognize his salvation, then we become the object and the focus and attention of God's Holy Spirit working in us both to accomplish his will but also to perfect us and to cause us to understand what great a price Jesus paid in dying for our sins. And he died for the sins of the whole world. So it's not enough that we just know that and it's not enough that we just think that, but rather we need to share that with a world that doesn't understand exactly what happened when Jesus lived, when Jesus spoke, when Jesus walked, when Jesus chose the cross, and when Jesus died on the cross, and when God raised him from the dead. When they do, as they do, then they can at least see the demonstration of love and in time choose to follow Jesus in what he said to do as he brings them to a place of realizing and recognizing his salvation so that none, though some will, but that none need go to a place of torment that we call hell, that's the lake of fire. 
When that seriousness of the lake of fire is considered and hell is a reality in a person's life, there is no doubt that no one, no one if they know what hell is, wants to go there.